Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. In today's episode of Garden Ramblings, we're going to tour the garden. I'll show you what's growing, all the work that I've kind of been putting into it. Slow and steady, like I say, helps build the garden. Been focusing on mulching. This is one of my pollinator beds. I've cleaned this up. I have different things growing in here that are edible. Just real quick, that is uh, blackberry, cane, the asparagus is in there. When we get down a little bit further, I'll show you the dill that I'm growing. You can scatter dill seeds, cilantro seeds into your perennial beds or your beds outside your garden and you can harvest herbs that way. And it really creates a really nice look. I am not affiliated with Ford. I would love a deal with them. But I wanted to show you the shredded hardwood. People keep asking me, what kind of shredded hardwood do you buy? That's it. All it says is shredded hardwood. Here in Maryland, it's pretty much available anywhere you go and I just pick up the shredded hardwood no dyes you don't want black brown or red just plain old shredded hardwood it works really well mulching this is my outside bed of garlic onions I have sage that you can see potatoes back there and I've just mulched out this whole area going all the way up really around my property around the around the garden I really like the brown this year I change it up sometimes I get mulch dumped here it's lighter looking this year I want the darker brown look at least in half of my garden bed. This is where I wanted to show you real quick. This is all dill that I scattered the seeds weeks ago and it's coming up nicely. You can see it all over. We can walk right into here. Some more dill right there. Some more dill in here. The butterflies love it. They will eat it but there's also plenty of dill for me to use so I don't really have to use any space in my garden for it. Although I am putting herbs throughout my main garden to help really repel insects or at least manage down the insects. I really like this section. I've been hitting this with the weed whacker, knocking the weeds down and I finally got to it. Look, you can't get to everything at once so you have to kind of just go in phases but I think this is looking beautiful. This is sage. You know, a nice herb. It's hard to use all of it, but it's a woody perennial. Comes back all the time. Beautiful purple flowers. That is oregano in there. That's ready to be cut down. Um, I'm going to hang it upside down to dry in my shed right over there. Let that dry. Use it, you know, for dried oregano flakes. Onions are good. Garlic is good. This bed will probably be one of the last ones I get to in mulching and all that kind of stuff. But I did weed it out. Going to be putting peppers down here, cleaning up that area. Globe artichokes are taking off. It's all about waiting for the right temperatures. Over the last, really, seven to 10 days, most of my garden plants are taking off. Luckily, we're still getting cool nights, so the lettuce is hanging around, but my broccoli's bolting. You'll see that. A mess that I'll get to later. I'll be doing a video on, you know, fixing up the raised bed right in there, raising the soil level, doing, I think, probably sweet potatoes, but not as much, because I think I said last time, we just don't eat that many. So this is the brown mulch. So what I'm doing, is I'm taking care of the garden and I'm working my way in slowly. I did this this morning. Things are looking pretty good. I like the brown mulch. Buying it in the bags like that is the most expensive way to do it. You can really look for your local chip drop in your state and it's pretty much free. It's a good idea to leave them like a $20 tip or something and they sort of prioritize you. All the peas are coming in. These were like, I don't know, probably put in two dozen pea plants in here but I'm gonna be you know harvesting tons of peas and I'm taking them now putting them in salads and stuff but there are probably hundreds of peas on there now beds look pretty good been eating the kale so I'm using the brown mulch sort of as brown carpet let's say so here's one room this is my container garden vertical towers green stock garden who I'm affiliated with but I got to fix all this up this morning everything's been watered in oh, I want to show you this so I've been growing pepper plants in my sunken um, cold frame and this is the peppers I just put them in now they're a little bit beat up but I wanted to show you the root system let me pull this out over here that's what I've been talking about a lot look at that massive root system so once this is in the ground and there's plenty of room in there too I have to do that right away when I'm done I don't want it to dry out you know what let me put it back in this container here I don't want to kill the roots. A massive root system and less green on top really means that these plants are going to take off when the right temperature comes. So in a couple areas I've put out basil early. It's been too cold. It's not really growing. So it's not really about getting your plants out early with massive upper growth. It's really about getting a nice balance of a nice root system, 
good upper growth and then getting them into the soil when the temperatures are right. Horseradish looks amazing. I'm going to be digging in there and trying to pull out some of the horseradish. While I'm here, I have been able to eat the lettuce, give it away. I'm just taking it over to Freetown Farm. This is a little beat up, but let me break this out and just show you. This is the butter crunch. So I'll be washing this up and I just like peeling off these leaves. They're beautiful and I've just been eating salad every day. Because of the cool nights, we're still getting into sometimes the upper 40s, but lower 50s, things aren't bolting yet, but it's gonna be going, the bolting's gonna come. I mean, the warm weather is just around the corner. I like the brown mulch. Space looks good. Lettuces in here are doing well, again, because it's not baking with 60 degree nights, 80 degree days. Things are okay so far. Tomatoes are starting to take off. These are my cold tolerant tomatoes. I think I was talking about them before, but like Siberian, Glacier, and the guy down here is the Subarctic Max. You have to watch that your plants don't overgrow. Like I had to tear out a lot of the pepper plants because they were falling over. Here's a perfect cue. Ladybug. If you're using dusts, I rinsed them off this morning, which was great. I don't, I didn't use it on the peppermint over here. But if you're using dust to control different insects, I do recommend putting it on late at night, rinsing it off early, because when you have the ladybugs show up or good insects show up, they're not gonna, they'll have less of a chance of walking into the different dust. The broccoli's starting to bolt, and you can see that I rinsed the dust off. I'll be cleaning this off again with the hose. I'll be harvesting the leaves, stewing them down or sauteing them down. I'll still eat the broccoli. This will go right into salads, but it's beginning to bud. Um, well, it's already bud, but the buds are beginning to loosen. It's going to flower, not tight heads. And every year, you know, I keep trying to grow the broccoli spring to summer and it didn't work here. I am growing some over deeper into the garden under shade cloth. Look at all the nectarines. I've actually been thinning those um, and I will continue to thin them. I'm just watching I mean, there's so many on here. There's probably 500, to be honest. I'm looking for ones to get damaged. I'm removing those because I don't know if a, a tree can really support all these nectarines. I think they would naturally fall off. Good news is to all of my fruit trees, let me just show you. I don't know how much you can see, but the nectarines go all the way up. Good news is, is I got to spray all of my trees with an antifungal. Don't ask me which ones I used. I used several different kinds. I've used a chemical kind, two organic types, and I'm just looking to see what is most effective here in Maryland. Maryland, with our humidity, fruit trees just get wrecked. So this year, I'm really trying to figure out when to apply the fungicides, fungicides, and which ones to use. The tomatoes, huge. These are gonna be producing probably in about three weeks using this uh, sort of cage, but this trellis to push the tomato plant towards the fence. And these tomatoes are gonna be growing along here. So this space is really starting to look good, um, in my opinion, or at least it's where I want it to be. Under there, under cover is Swiss chard. So I have to get in, harvest the kale leaves. One way to reduce damage to your plants is to harvest regularly. So if you can't keep up with the harvesting, you're probably growing too many collard greens. And the more leaves you have, the more kale leaves you have, the more space you have for that white butterfly to lay the eggs on there, the more space you have for the eggs to hatch and the loopers to get out of control. If you're harvesting them, I know I always say it's kind of gross, you're removing the leaves, you're washing off some of the eggs, you're cooking down some of the eggs, but you're becoming the predator, so to speak, and you are reducing the population of insects and stuff that are on your plants. And if you wash them, I don't want to freak you out. You can clean them off, cer certainly. And you can also see the eggs. But the whole idea is the more you have growing that these insects enjoy, the bigger their population gets. So you want to match growing with how much you can consume, harvest, give away, etc and just keep that cycle going. And you're always sort of cleaning out your plants, new leaves are growing and things tend to be a little bit more manageable when it comes to pest pressure and disease pressure. Tower will be getting filled up. Kohlrabi's in there starting to bulb. 
down at the bottom. I hope that's a good sign. I hope the cool weather comes. I'm just letting the pak choy go. Potatoes all in here. More peas. The beets are looking pretty good. The um, problem that I was having with these, and I don't know why it just escaped me. All right, so you'd, I cut this out, but I had to pause 45 seconds to remember the leaf miners that were in here were taking care of using a dust. So what's left is old trail marks from them mining through the leaves. That's just going to brown out. It's fine. But all the new growth looks really good coming out of there. These will get dusted again and then they will get rinsed off. You can see water marks on here. This is the part of the garden that I've been setting up. I'm going to clean out this area. I got to get in here and weed and I'm going to be putting um, cylindrica or um, basically cylindrical beets in there. The, this seeds for the beets in here they didn't take so I'm going to pull them out or clean that section out. Potatoes, the kale, same thing. Even though that I'm using the ag fabric, I still get into an inspect it. There's tons of leaves in here. I have to get in there and really thin this out or I'm going to get pest pressure. You know, I don't really get diseases on the, on the kale. So these have been cleaned up. I'm going to harvest them. I will put insect dust on there after the harvest, put the ag fabric back on top and I will just let them grow for a while. The lettuce in here is absolutely beautiful. I have to get to eating that. I'll be giving that away too, but it looks awesome. The peas are coming up, sunflower back there that came up naturally. And I really like this space. The brown mulch wanted to change it up. So probably that this half of the garden is gonna be brown mulch. The other half at some point probably will be chip drop and that's just lighter mulch. This is not really aged, but I think it sits, it gets a little bit browner, and that's why it looks like this. The chip drop stuff is freshly cut, so it's still kind of, you know, wood color and it's lighter. Space looks nice. This is what the path looks like with the dark wood in there. I wanted to get that. Maybe I'll put a dark path straight all the way down, actually. I think that would kind of look cool. And then halfway through there, it'll transition over to the wood chips, and I'm just going to be using the chip drop wood chips under my fruit area when we get down there. There's no point in putting the brown mulch down there because everything covers it over. Cleaned out this space. This is one, two radishes. If you ever were curious about, oh, there's some blue line for my weed eater. A radish turns into this. That radish is too woody to eat, so you can't really harvest it. But I am eating the buds. You can see that I've been taking them off in different places of the radish plant. And I'm eating the flowers. These are little radish seed pods. If you let them grow, you'll be able to harvest radish, uh, yeah, radish seeds out of them. And you can also eat them. I'm going to just leave two here um, for something to add to salads. Also, I like the way that it looks. Another radish right in here. And these are Crimson Giants, so I could save those seeds. Beans are coming up. I'm putting rosemary throughout the garden. This is the basil that's getting beat up. You know, when your basil looks like that or any of your plants look like that, sometimes it's the cold weather when it's the warm crops um, getting put in early. But this will get a drink of Agro Thrive or fish emulsion, and that will take care of the problem. The Russian sage looks beautiful. The turnips. So I've already harvested about six out of here. Look at the beautiful turnips. We'll take one out. That one's ready to eat. They're soft. They're sweet. They don't get woody. You can actually plant these again even when the heat of the summer comes. And they're all, you know, starting to get to size. When you have two like that, so you would just take one out now. You could eat that one. Let the other one get bigger. But that's perfect. I've been actually dicing these up and just using them in salads. The carrots are doing pretty well up top, but there's not much carrot development underneath. So we'll see what happens. Cilantro, you can see poking up through there. This is arugula seeds and flowers. They're delicious. You know, you can grow flowers like that. Also, it's hard to see, but all these little bees and pollinators are coming in because they absolutely love the flowers. Tomatoes over there. We've already talked about that section. I'll skip that for now. This is super hardy too. This is all spread by itself. You could dig this out. You could put it into a pot, cut it down really harshly, just get the roots into the ground, into a container or into the ground where you want to grow it. And it's just a beautiful purple sage. 
this is what I wanted to show. And the other thing too is if you want to follow me through the garden ramblings, even though they're uh, longer videos, when I do all the short videos, so this was um, this section was in a video for planting cucumber seeds. Seven days, they've already popped up. So if you followed this video series, Garden Ramblings, you'll get to see how all the plants are doing in my short videos, basically. So over here, that's actually watermelon. I put cucumber somewhere. I don't know, we'll get to it. Oh, let me turn around and go back. So the cucumber seeds that you just saw, seven days already germinating. These are cucumber seeds from Freetown Farm, or plants. You know, they had to spend about four weeks being grown, five weeks, get to the size, put them in the ground. The plants that I just showed you are starting with root systems going into the earth. They're going to catch up to these guys. So there's certain things that you can do to save a lot, and that's also dill right in there, and garlic is going in there. Certain things you can do to save money, and it's, one, don't buy cucumber transplants. There's a reason to do transplants. Maybe I'll talk about that later, but I've already talked about that. There's a reason to buy transplants, but if you're able to, you can direct seed cucumbers, squash, zucchini. They germinate real quick, or they germinate quickly, and you know, you'll save yourself a lot of money. That pack of seeds can just be stored, and you'll have it for weeks. Seven dust, this is a chemical. This is being used on the cabbage right here. Captain Jack's is being used on the broccoli because I don't want to get the seven dust in there. I want to see if there's a difference between them. Captain Jack's works. Seven dust works really well. And this year I want to prove to myself that I can use the organic version as effectively as the seven dust. Well, might I use the seven dust? Um, say I had a huge breakout and infestation. I will hit it with the seven dust at night, come back, wash it off. What I recommend is you learn about all the different tools. Understand what the different chemicals are that are made by people. Just because it's organic doesn't necessarily mean it's safe for all insects. And, you know, I don't think the organic stuff is harmful to us. But it could also impact us. So don't just go by the label. In here are my super hots. But just don't go by the label always looking for you know just organic so obviously i had this on when it was really hot so it has fried some of the leaves so let me take this off now so this should go on at night note to myself so i'm using this to keep this warmer at night so these super hots grow faster but if i forget and leave it on during the day it's heating up so much in there it was causing damage kohlrabi in there looks beautiful more radishes, the black Spanish radishes never formed, but I'm letting them grow and I'll be doing something with them. Have other waves of, right in there, of the purple top turnips. Asparagus found its way in there. My parsnips are starting to really come up. Radishes are disappearing. Celery looks good. That is a purple, kind of leafy cabbage. Um, it's doing really well in the heat. It's starting to form. It's a loose leaf like cabbage. I'll be harvesting that soon. Here's another area where I put in the shredded hardwood. I think it looks really good. So maybe since I put it in here, I will finish it like right up to here, do the center path, and then, you know, change it up. The beauty of the garden is you do whatever you want. Shredded hardwood's kind of expensive. Um, when you're buying it by the bag. So do what you can. Use, you know, the resources that are local and see how it goes. Here is the broccoli under the shade cloth. It's a little bit tighter headwise. This is a purple broccoli, but I feel like it's not working. Captain Jackson here, supposed to be safe. Seven dust back there. Why do I use both? One, I believe more in learning what the chemicals are. And people say, it's chemical, it's chemical, everything's a chemical. Different products, just because they're made by people, doesn't mean they're super toxic, a little toxic, poisonous, wrecking your garden. You have to learn the tools. And that's why I'm not saying to people, you need to be 100% organic or 100% chemical, I guess, if that's a thing. You gotta use what works. If a big infestation rolled into here and my organic treatments didn't work, do I just want everything to die out? No, I may go to seven dust. 
or something stronger. What would I, I wouldn't use it on leafy greens that I'm going to eat like spinach, lettuce, etc., arugula, but I'll use it on stronger leaves, bigger fruit. Things are looking pretty good in here. Kale going crazy. That has to be thinned out. Again, that's a perfect example. Without eating all that, that's just going to be a haven for insects and possibly pests, depending on the, what, what you're growing. So that's going to get thinned out too. I keep forgetting this section. This has to be cleared up. I'm going to be putting more peppers in there, the ones that I've been growing in the cold frame. Last round of radishes, that's pretty much done. Blackberries looking beautiful. And I might be doing a video actually. I keep going back and forth. So there's always people that want to be 100% something, which I respect if you want to be 100% organic. What I don't like is people that use it kind of fear-mongering to scare the new gardeners that you, you have to be organic or you're doing something wrong. I might do a video where I take the chemical fertilizers um, and just give everything a drink. And then people will be like, you wrecked your garden, you're no longer 100% organic. <laughs> I am. 99%, 95%. Most of my garden is compost now, you know, mixed into the soil. I just, I don't know, maybe it's my soapbox, but I just don't want people to fear having to use a chemical water soluble fertilizer because that's all they can afford. Buying compost is expensive. Maybe you just want to grow food. Look at the beautiful strawberries popping in now. These containers are looking good. I've been taking care of them. Where might I use chemical fertilizer? Like I put AgroThrive in here, but if you're on a budget, the miracle Grow product works. If you don't like the company that makes miracle Grow, don't buy that. You can buy a uh, plant expert, Vigoro, any kind of company, you know, really makes these water soluble fertilizers. The spinach I never took out, romaine lettuce, I've been able to eat. It's delicious. I'm actually picking these leaves one by one. The dust that's on here is actually pollen. You know, they're starting to give out, but they're so good. You can just mix them right into a salad. That's all got to come out. Peppers are looking pretty good. These are going to get hit with some AgroThrive just to get them a little bit greener, get them going. And you can see that I'm in transition with different plants here. They got to get watered. that are a little bit droopy. Flea beetles. That is flea beetle damage. There's an insect right there doing something. I don't know if it's good or bad right above my finger. Um, I'll come back and try and kind of figure out what that is. But without putting the dust down, you can see the dust was down. Now it's gone. And the eggplant just got really beat up. This one might not even make it. So this will get AgriThrive. Sometimes emergency plants, that would get the chemical fertilizer. Just give them everything they need. They should be okay. I was slow in getting the AgriThrive going. And for people looking for the organic dust, it's Captain Jack's Dead Bug Dust, and they have Captain Jack's Dead Bug Spray. You can buy both versions. I don't really like doing sprays in the garden because it's spraying everywhere and you don't know what you're hitting. I prefer to use dusts in here. Uh, let's see hose mess. This is what my garden looks like. This is what gardens typically look like. I didn't come through and clean it up. I left everything out just so you could kind of see what a garden should look like. I could have cleaned up everything. Here's a pile of a mess. But we can only do so much and that's the message that I keep trying to get to people is you do your best. So out here you can see a lot of the mulch has kind of decayed and worked its way in to the earth. Really good for the garden here. Really good for the blackberries, the blueberries. Might as well show you at this point. All the blueberries. And a lot of my plants are just covered with the green berries. So this is where I would, you know, maybe now that I'm thinking about it, maybe I'll just do the chip drop in here. But this would be the fruit room, the orchard room. Lots of mulch down. Really want to cover over the weeds that are coming through. And this will be a lighter color in contrast in contrast to all the brown mulch over there. We'll see. Always just have fun with it. Fruit trees are going crazy. I have to prune them again. They've already been pruned. They are dwarf style, so I'll be learning how to cut the tops down. But the blueberries, different varieties. Here's another variety. These are a little bit plumper. 
and then this is a different variety too. You have the early, middle, and late maturing blueberries. You want to mix the plants up. Tiny Tims. These were the Tiny Tims that were in my house growing under grow lights. They were beat up. Look how beautiful they are. These, nope, they didn't get any chemical fertilizer. These just got a lot of agrothrive. So it's really up to you. My point, putting down a chemical fertilizer isn't going to make a toxic plant. It's not going to hurt the earth in here. This soils perfectly fine with putting in some of the chemical types. Agro Thrive, great. It's good stuff. It's organic. What this soil needs is more compost. It doesn't matter on the fertilizers. It needs more organic matter in there. Um, leaf mold, my compost. So after this year, I will dump this out. I will mix in more organic matter. I guess that's maybe the point. It's not so much an organic water soluble fertilizer or a chemical fertilizer it's putting in compost and organic matter and just really building the soil which actually builds soil supports the microbiology you know and creates really good stuff this has to get actually staked up a little bit it's getting too much shade but this is all of my ginger and this is pretty sandy too this is what i'm talking about this is just really depleted i need more organic matter in there Oh, let's keep going. One more example. So this isn't getting watered because I don't have anything growing in here. I mean, look at this. That's just too sandy and too dry. Organic matter. More important than whether or not you choose to use an organic water soluble, organic granular, or you use a chemical type water soluble. I haven't been in this space except to rip out the hops vines. Alpine strawberries, looking pretty good. This is just another view. You can see how dense it's getting in here. Let's straighten out the camera. So I will be coming in here, supporting the growth. My blackberries are slowly working their way down here. Blueberries are getting huge. Um, I'm gonna have to start doing some pruning, which is a good problem to have. This is my wall of blackberries. I mean, just every flower. Well, here's the blackberries for me. You know, you get a flower, forms into this. Up top, you have some bigger blackberries. Very, very happy with how this is growing. And these are just different looks. This is what I talk about rooms. Like, you know, maybe somewhere in here, I would get a bench. You know, it'll be just a kind of hidden room. One view from this side. So I have a lot in now and I'm not rushing it. Typically, and maybe we'll wrap up here. I don't know why I keep dropping the camera to the side. Sorry about that. So one of the things I'm trying to do is not put in my extra plants. Like I have a lot of peppers in here. They're gonna go in some different places. They're actually to go, going to go out into the landscape beds so I can grow peppers out there. But years ago, I would just keep shoving them in. Like I was able to stop here. These are metal signs that you can get at my seed shop too. So for those of you that didn't watch the container garden, this is hot peppers along here, not the super hots, but I have facing heaven, Anaheim chilies, two peppers per pot, poblano, early jalapeno, jalapeno M, red hot cherry, serrano, um, pepperoncini, um, baggio, and then those are red hot cherries. I have two containers left. I'm just looking for something different. I'm not gonna just throw in more of those peppers you saw sitting in, in containers um, behind me. Pacing myself. I don't feel like this year I have to get everything planted up. This is gonna take up a lot of space. When it's done, I don't even know what I'm gonna put in there. But I've got one, two, three tomato plants here instead of four. And I'm just kind of slowing the pace down with that whole principle that I want to be able to eat everything that I'm growing or give it away. I don't want excess or extra sitting around that can be used. There's the Russian sage. It tracks beautiful bumblebees. There's a real tiny bees flying around. I don't know if you can see them. It's but great it's for attracting pollinators and other good insects to your garden. And like I was saying, rambling on about, is try and grow what you're going to consume. Like the uh, tomatoes behind me. Instead of growing four in there, I'm growing three. I'll have better airflow, less problems with potential diseases and insects, and you just want to match, again, your intake 
with what you're growing. It's going to be a lot less work. So now we come around here where the seven dust was. What if I just said, you know, you should only be organic. If you use any chemical fertilizers or any kind of chemical insect sprays, you're going to be poisoning yourself. You're going to harm yourself. That's not the message I want to send. I want people to really understand. And that's Captain Jack's dead bug dust. That's what it looks like. I want people to understand that organic gardening is wonderful. It starts with compost. But most importantly is really check out the different products you're using. Just don't look for that organic stamp. And if we look in here, do a comparison, both dusts are doing equally well. I mean, you could pick either one based on your preference. A couple holes maybe in the broccoli. These are in the same family. The white moth comes and devastates them. So the seven dust again down on the bottom. I don't see any holes. A couple holes up top on broccoli, but they look both pretty effective. But I want to test it out, see which ones truly work well. Let's spin around and go back up. We'll end where I'm growing the um, peppers in the sunken container. Rosemary, peppermint oil spray. I'm using that more heavily now too. I keep a separate container. I think that was in the last video. This way I can mix it up. Peppermint oil, rosemary oil can stay in a container longer than some of your other sprays. Peanuts right in there. A single tomato plant. I have some sugar baby watermelons growing in there, setting up a trellising system so the leaves can come up through here. Melons would be able to sit on here as they develop. And this is just going to be for three melon plants. Last year I put in too many fruit plants in here, cantaloupe, melon, cucumber, it was just a mess. Got a tomato plant growing in there that I'm going to weave up this side. Not sure what I'm going to put in there. You know, and again, this might be the area for the pumpkin patch. Peas are forming on here. These are shelling peas because I know that because I just tried to eat the pod and it was a little tough. Snow peas down the other side. Um, sugar snap peas down the other side, edible pods, edible peas, shelling peas, you remove the shell, you eat the peas. Here is the butter crunch lettuce that I was showing you earlier in the video. Look how beautiful that is. That's going to be lunch as soon as I'm done shooting this video. And here are some of the peppers that are coming out of there. What's kind of cool in here is one, the peppers are definitely growing, but look at the tomato plant. That tomato plant grew itself. It's bigger than any plant that I have out here. And again, if you need to direct seed, cucumbers, squash, zucchini, melons, pumpkins, even tomato seeds, they do really well and you can save yourself a good amount of money because you're not spending any time um, growing them as transplants. You're not needing a greenhouse, which I love the greenhouse over there. You don't have to set up a grow light station for them. You do for other plants. But it is a way to save money. A lot of people have been getting overwhelmed with going to the big box stores and plants are like 4 or $5 now. Like if you bought three cucumber plants, two squash plants, a uh, pumpkin, whatever, what is that? You're already at like 30 bucks. Just get packs of seeds and it's good for a couple of years. Took out the lettuce there. Peas look good. Interplanting heavily. There's the shishito peppers. They're looking good. And I'll be talking about, we'll end here actually. So this got dusted. It's been rinsed off. Colorado potato beetle was in my garden a couple days ago. And I don't know if they overwinter in the ground and they come up as beetles or how they get here. But the first beetle is just coming in to lay eggs. By catching it, dusting it, I killed off the adult beetle. That's going to help me a lot because if I missed it, they're going to be laying eggs on the underside, bright orange eggs. You can find them and then all those eggs hatch and that's what devastates and put tons of holes in your leaves. So you're really interrupting the life cycle. So the Colorado potato beetle, sometime in the beginning of May, you hit the potatoes with dust, kills off the adults, you get less eggs. I'm going to have to dust again for the eggs that got through, but you want to learn the routine of the pests that come to your garden. That will really help you be able to get more production out of your garden, bigger harvests. And again, same thing with the chemical fertilizers, chemical sprays, organic sprays, organic fertilizers. You really want to learn what they're about. I mean, I think it's wonderful. You trust me. Thank you. But also do some research and try and learn what everything is. Decide if it's something for you in your garden. All right. Thanks so much for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com. And we're also and running a sale at the seed shop just for this weekend. Um, buy two packs of Bentley seeds, get one pack of seeds free, so you can save some money that way. 
but things look really good. I'm going to get everything mulched up, I think, today um, or, you know, through the weekend. And then my garden's going to be where I want it to be. Take your time. Don't feel like you have to rush. You can see different parts of my garden are a mess. Slow and steady builds a garden. Thanks so much for watching.